Hi to all of you and welcome to yet another lecture of molecular biology. This is the eighth lecture in this series and I will be focusing uh, on eukaryotic machinery in this lecture. Uh, the contents of the lecture are specifically uh, focusing on the replosome of the eukaryotes and the different types of polymerases which eukaryotes use for their replication. And then I will be focusing also on the accessory enzymes which both uh, eukaryotes and prokaryotes use uh, during their application process. So discussing uh, with the machinery of a replication, as you already know that uh, all of the enzymes and the proteins which are needed for the replication process are together called as the replosome. This makes a dynamic complex in the cell and they are indirectly or directly involved in the process. The main enzyme which uh, uh, is uh, required for the replication process is the DNA polymerase enzyme, which associates itself with the other proteins and enzymes which are accessory to it during the replication process. And the table gives you the description of different types of enzymes which are essential for the replication process. And this makes the machinery of a, a replication viable. Uh, prime of them is the DNA polymerase as already known. Then there is DNA helicase which unwinds the DNA uh, during the replication fork uh, um, opening. Then DNA ligase which joins the newly formed DNA fragments in the lagging strand that is the it joins the Okazaki fragments together to form a continuous strand. Then there is a DNA primase. This is uh, required for the synthesis of primers uh, during the initiation of the replication. Without this, the uh, DNA polymerase in itself cannot synthesize the DNA on the template strand. Then there is topoisomerases, which change the linking number and it relaxes the torsional strain in the uh, replication fork, which is caused by the unwinding of the DNA during the replication process. Then the another is RNA is H. It removes the RNA primers which are synthesized by the DNA primase during the initiation of the replication. And finally, the single strand binding proteins. These keep the single strand in a linear form during the replication process. So all of these are the constituents of the replosome and primary of all of them is the polymerases. The replication process in eukaryotic cells is very complex and it contains a lot of accessory proteins and specifically usually three different types of polymerases are involved in the replication process. Uh, this is the diagram which shows the replosome uh, functioning replosome during the replication of the two strands of the parental DNA into the daughter DNA. You will see in the uh, slide that the, this is the strand which is leading strand and it involves the synthesis in a continuous manner from the five prime to three prime direction. And then this is the another uh, parental strand which synthesizes the daughter DNA in a discontinuous manner called as Okazaki fragments. And you will see there is a difference uh, in the polymerases in both strands here in the lagging strand, Paul A and Paul Delta is uh, active. And in the uh, leading strand, polymerase Epsilon is active. I'll be focusing on those, uh, what are their functions. And uh, there are also primases, SSBPs, uh, topoisomerases, which take place, um, which uh, do their function during the uh, replosome also. So the accessory proteins activity as well as the activity of different kinds of polymerases uh, are in synergy with each other. So as uh, they will replicate the parental DNA into the daughter DNA. Another important aspect of this is that before the replication takes place that uh, the DNA which is in duplicate uh, form or duplex form having two strands has to be melted away from each other. The two strands have to be uh, prized apart and this is done uh, with the concomitant effect of the helicases and topoisomerases. The helicases and topoisomerases act together so as to prize the um, eukaryotic double strand uh, away from each other so that they will be exposed to 
uh, polymerases to do their replication. Further also uh, in the lagging strand, you will see here in the lagging strand, uh, the Okazaki fragments which are synthesized are uh, needed to be joined. So there is a nick in between the two strands. And remember, I had already told you that uh, in uh, prokaryotes, the Pol1 does the function. And here also uh, the polymerase uh, delta together with the specific enzyme called as ligase does the function of joining the nick between the Okazaki fragments. I will be focusing also on that. In eukaryotic cells, uh, 15 different uh, polymerases have been discovered. Out of these 15, five are important uh, in the replication process. Four of them are nuclear, alpha, beta, delta, and epsilon. They are present in the nucleus and uh, do the replication of the nuclear DNA, while as uh, gamma is responsible for the mitochondrial genome replication. Two important of the, of the four nuclear are alpha and delta, which are responsible mostly for the chromosomal replication. The table uh, just compares them on the different types of polymerases which are present in the uh, eukaryotic cells. You will see uh, that alpha, beta, uh, delta and epsilon are responsible for the replication of the nuclear as well as the repair function also. In eukaryotic cells, when a DNA replication has to take place, the uh, polymerases which bind first to the uh, DNA for its replication is the DNA polymerase alpha type. So this is the one uh, which uh, recognizes the origin of replication after activation by replication complex by cyclin. Cyclins are a different kinds of an, uh, regulatory proteins which identifies the site at which the uh, replication has to start. That site is called as replication origin of replication and it is usually the AT rich region which uh, is easy to melt first. So after it is melted uh, at the site of uh, replication, uh, the DNA alpha recognizes that melting um, site and it binds to it. There is a second reason why it binds first is that it has an intrinsic primase activity. The primase activity synthesizes the primer which is needed for the initiation of replication. So with the help of its own intrinsic primase activity, it is able to synthesize seven to 10 nucleotide long RNA run. This RNA run is a primer uh, and this is needed for the DNA replication to initiate as you can see here. Uh, there is a difference also in between leading and lagging strand. In leading strand it is synthesized only once because then uh, the leading strand will be continuously replicated while as in lagging strand it is to be synthesized every time the Okazaki fragments are synthesized. So this is the difference. So you will see also the difference between leading and lagging strand in on the basis of the attachment by DNA polymerase alpha. Whereas DNA polymerase alpha is binded to a leading strand only once at the start of an initiation or at the initiation of the uh, replication. In lagging strand, the uh, DNA polymerase alpha in eukaryotes will bind continuously uh, after every 10,000 or 1,000 base pairs so as to synthesize the primers again and again for the discontinuous synthesis of the lagging strand. So after it synthesizes the primer, what uh, DNA Paul alpha does is that it uh, continues the synthesis of a primer and then replaces it with the extension of DNA of about 15 nucleotides in length, as you can see in this picture here. Uh, first it synthesizes the short run of RNA and then it extends it to some level of about 15 nucleotides of DNA. And this stops here. The synthesis by Paul alpha polymerase activity stops here. So Paul alpha has two activities. First, it synthesizes the primer uh, in leading stand only once in lagging uh, every time. And then it extends in it, uh, it by 15 nucleotides of DNA. Then what happens is called as a polymerase switching. The polymerase switching is done by a special kind of a replication factor, which is not shown in this picture. What does uh, this replication factor do? Replication factor C causes the removal of Paul alpha and replaces the Paul alpha with Paul delta. So this is the uh, polymerase switching which happens in uh, both leading and lagging strand. 
uh, as it is evident in uh, lagging strand here in this uh, picture you will see that the pol alpha is getting replaced by the pol delta this pol delta has a high processivity because of its attachment with the polymerase cell nuclear antigen polymerase cell nuclear antigen functions in a similar way as the beta ring beta clamp in the uh, uh, E. coli polymerases, it increases its processivity. Hence, uh, Paul Delta is the main um, polymerase uh, which replicates the lagging strand. In the leading strand, usually this alpha is replaced by the epsilon type. So this is the difference also in some uh, ways that Paul uh, epsilon is uh, the one which uh, replicates the leading strand and the Paul alpha and delta concomitantly the delta one which is the main uh, which uh, replicates the lagging strand and eventually what happens is that the okazaki fragments are uh, produced and in between the two okazaki fragments there is a nick as you can see here and the nick is there that is the space in between which is not joined by phosphodiester bonds this phosphodiester bond is then later on uh, uh, ligated by special enzyme called a ligases so there is another uh, thing that Paul Delta has a proofreading activity as well as is as uh, happening in the Paul Epsilon also. So Paul Epsilon and Paul Delta has both uh, proofreading activities as well. This slide shows you the difference between the five different main types of the polymerases which are functioning in the eukaryotes for the DNA replication. Uh, you will see uh, the differences uh, lie not only in the gene which codes uh, the you know, polymerases in eukaryotes but also in their processivity and the proofreading activity. You will see the proofreading activity out of five only three has a proofreading activity uh, and uh, for the nuclear uh, four types of polymerases only delta and epsilon have the proofreading activity hence they are the ones which are replicating the leading and the lagging strand. The leading strand is uh, replicated mostly by epsilon and uh, the lagging strand is replicated mostly by delta after they are switched uh, from alpha uh, polymerase. So moving to the general accessory proteins which are uh, required for the replication whether in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. The primary one which is necessary for the replication process as I have already told you in the previous lectures also that DNA primases are the um, uh, ones which are necessary for the initiation of a replication. Uh, why they are important because they synthesize the RNA primers on the template uh, during the initiation and they uh, uh, begin the replication at its origin uh, which is AT rich region. Secondly, they also facilitate uh, that discontinuous manner of replication in the Okazaki fragments. In E. coli, the primase is uh, coded by DNA G locus while as in um, eukaryotes, you already know this function is done by DNA Paul alpha which has a separate activity for uh, synthesizing the primase whether in the leading or the lagging strand up till and until it is uh, switched by Paul Delta and Paul Epsilon. Uh, the pri primase and helicase in turn uh, in the prokaryotes is uh, present uh, in a specialized functional uh, dimer which is called as primosome in prokaryotes. What does primosome do? It does the primase activity as well as the helicase activity. Helicase activity is special activity which opens up the origin of replication during its initiation process. So the second accessory factor which is needed for the uh, DNA replication initiation whether in prokaryotes or eukaryotes is the helicases. In prokaryotes it is uh, present in association with um, the primases and makes up a primosome. What does helicases do? They actually translocate along the single strand DNA and they use their ATP uh, hydrolysis energy to break the bonds between the two strands of the DNA so as to melt the DNA uh, at the origin of replication. They separate the two DNA segments uh, from each other and they are essential for replication uh, by providing the single strand templates and they are the ones uh, which uh, are the first to join the uh, replication initiation machinery uh, forming a replosome. 
so uh, when the replication has to take place the first among the first uh, proteins which bind to the uh, dna origin of replication are the helicases they identify the area where the uh, replication has to start in this diagram in eukaryotes you will see uh, the helicases are here always associated so as it will melt the dna it only melts the hydrogen bonds between the two strands it doesn't unwind unwinding is a process which is done by separate accessory uh, proteins or enzymes so they will usually translocate in one direction along the dna and are depending upon the polarity they are classified according <coughs> then there is a, a third accessory protein which is called as dna topo isomerases topo isomerases are the ones which uh, actually relax the torsional strain um, between the two unwinded duplex uh, dna strands as is done by the helicases so helicases melt the dna they prise them apart while as the topo isomerases relaxes the dna so that the another machinery of the initiation of the replication uh will come and bind to do their part so they remove the knots and resolve the catenates which are formed by the helicases and usually they change the linking number by either one or two that means that they can break the one strand or both the strands to relieve the tor torsional strain and hence they are classified as topo isomerase 1 and topo isomerase 2 depending upon whether they will Uh, change the torsional strain by plus minus one or plus minus two. That means by breaking one uh, strand of the duplex or both strands of the du duplex to release their torsional strain. So what does class one topo isomerase do? Uh, is that it cleaves only one strand and hence can decatenate by a step of plus minus one. it does uh, this so by passing the one strand through the break as you can see in the uh, picture you will see that topo isomerase uh, causes uh, the nucleophilic attack on the site at which it has to relax the torsional strain it forms the transient bond between itself and the strand pi prime end of the strand and then it moves this strand which is not break through this nick when it moves it through this nick it releases the torsional strain by step of plus minus 1 and then when it does uh, and relax it uh, by changing it uh, plus minus 1 it gets dissociated from the complex and hence uh, it decatenates or catenates it class 2 topo isomerase is cleaves both strands uh, at one go so they decatenate and catenate covalently closed circles by changing the linkum number in a step of plus minus 2 this they do by breaking both the strands at one go in eukaryotes this function is done by dna gyrase which is uh, the type 2 enzyme and this enzyme is uh, dependent on atp for doing its function it can uh, introduce negative the supercoiling uh, into the dna as well so it functions in both directions to decatenate or catenate and to increase or decrease the supercoiling in, uh, in prokaryotes uh, during the termination uh, process of replication the topo isomerase play a role in decatenating the two closely covalent daughter dna which are just synthesized from the parental dna SSBPs as the name suggests are the single strand binding proteins they are the proteins which bind to the single stranded regions of the melted dna since the single strand dna are produced by the helicase activity and then concomitantly the torsional strain is relaxed by topo isomerases they are the ones which follow the binding of helicases in the origin of replication during the initiation phase of the replication so these accessory proteins are required for efficient uh, activity of the helicases as well as topo isomerases and when ssbps are binded to the single strand uh, regions of the dna then the primase action will follow so in prokaryotes the primases are the ones which bind after the binding of ssbps to the single stranded dna in the origin of replication while as in uh, eukaryotes this function is done by pol alpha 
so in replication what they what do they do is essentially stabilize the melted origins which are produced by the helicase activity and then topo isomerase activity they also sustain the activity of the helicases continuously they remove the secondary structures which might uh, creep in into the dna template if they don't bind quickly then they also inhibit the nuclease activity so nucleases are the special kinds of an accessory proteins which uh, actually degrade the DNA or um, also RNA. So in E. coli and uh, eukaryotes, the SSBPs are the ones which uh, interact with the primase, as I already told you. So uh, they interact with the primase and tell actually the primase to come and bind to the melted uh, single strands and start the primase activity, start the synthesis of primer, which in turn is then extended by the polymerases. Finally, the important accessory protein which is needed for the completion of the replication, especially in the lagging strand, is the ligases. Ligases are the ones which actually uh, fill the nick between the two Okazaki fragments in the lagging strand, as you can see in the picture. Here, there is a nick, there is a nick. This nick is uh, prepared in a way by the ligases. And they do this by interacting with the 5 prime phosphate group of the uh, one uh, strand uh, at one end and the 3 prime end at the another end so that they can make a phosphodiester bond between them and seal the nick. In bacteria, DNA ligases require NAD as for their function as a prosthetic group and in eukaryotes and archaea, they require ATP as the prosthetic group or for the energy generation and in both uh, the uh, the atp or the nad actually supplies the adenylate group so that it will make the enzyme active and then the transference uh, takes place uh, without the loss of energy the phosphodiester bond is made between the three prime end of the one of the okazaki fragment to the five prime end of the another of the okazaki fragment to seal the nick and make a new as you can see in the accompanying diagram uh, the uh, eukaryotic dna ligases uh, not only fixes the um, uh, nicks between the two okazaki fragments but also repairs uh, the dna as i have already told you in some uh, slides in the nick translations as well so what does they do is that this uh, dna ligase enzyme uh, first binds to the prosthetic group either ATP or the NAD and it uh, becomes enzyme AMP adenylated enzyme which is activated uh, form of an enzyme and then this adenylated uh, AMP interacts with the uh, 5 prime end of the nick in one of the Okazaki fragments and makes the link between the 5 prime and the adenylate which it just procured from the ATP. So this adenylated uh, 5 prime end of the Okazaki fragment is then attacked by the uh, 3 prime hydroxyl group through the nucleophilic attack and it seals this nick uh, to form a continuous strand in the lagging uh, strand of the replication. And this AMP is synthesized back or released back. So this is the way that DNA ligase ligates or um, seals the nick between the two Okazaki fragments in replication or as well as during the mutation repair in the eukaryotes. And last but not the least, uh, there is another accessory protein which are function in um, the replication if not directly are the nucleases. They are the ones which digest the nucleic acids. Uh, by hydrolyzing the phosphodiester bond. So they in a way um, work uh, in a quite opposite direction to that of the polymerases. Uh, since there are two different types of the nucleic acids, uh, DNA and RNA, they are also classified uh, based upon that, either DNases or RNases. So DNases are the ones which will degrade uh, the phosphodiester bond uh, in the DNA and ribonucleases have the substrate as RNA. Uh, further, they are classified as exonucleases and endonucleases. Exonucleases are the one, uh, those nucleases which uh, 
degrade the nucleic acids from the end either from the 5 prime end or from the 3 prime end so they uh, act on the dna or the rna from the either of the two ends while as there is another special kind of an um, uh, nucleases which are called as endonucleases so endonucleases are the ones which uh, break the uh, dna or rna at the middle at any point in the middle not at the end usually they are specialized and then they have their own classes and usually these uh, endonucleases uh, identify a hexameric sequence uh, within the nucleic acid to degrade it especially the type 2 uh, type of an uh, endonucleases so they hydrolyze the internal phosphodiester bond uh, um, during it is uh, activity i hope you liked this lecture and it was beneficial to you in the next lecture i will be discussing the mechanism of replication if you like the contents of the video you can order the book molecular biology and biotechnics from amazon it's available both in kindle and paperback format and do subscribe to my channel uh, for further uh, videos which i will upload in due time